Hi friends, good to be with you. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent and how good it is that we are together. And let us begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that the child has been conceived in her. So she will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> well, friends, the longest Advent can be is this year when Christmas falls on Sunday and then we have four full weeks of our Advent preparation. So today, as the fourth candle is lit, we still have a week to go. So we're almost there, but we're not there yet. And so, as our Advent time continues, as we know, Advent is a time to prepare, a time to slow down. How can we slow down in the midst of the craziness of this time of the year? Students are rushing for to do exams and papers. All of us are, we're shopping, we're writing cards, we're cleaning, we're decorating. And then the church tells us to slow down. And you know what? The church is right. So during this last week of Advent, let us truly take some time to simply be with God, to simply prepare for this wonderful feast and season of Christmas that's coming, where Jesus comes into our hearts not just on the Christmas day, but in every day of our lives through the incarnation, where God became man through his birth as a man, as Jesus. So let's take time this week in the midst of the craziness and the excitement to slow down, to do our best and to be our best. This gospel is such a beautiful reminder to us of Mary and Joseph's faithfulness. Mary and Joseph said yes when it was crazy to say yes. Mary, who's pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Who's the Holy Spirit? What's the Holy Spirit? Joseph, who was a righteous man, Scripture says, was going to divorce her quietly. He could have, by Mosaic law, had her stoned to death. How do you think Joseph felt? Mary, you cheated on me. Mary, why did you do this to me? What was wrong with me? Why? See, remember, friends, when we read Scripture, the people in the Scripture stories, they do not know how the story ends. We do. They don't. They are living the story. And so Mary, who had to say yes, Mary, who had to say yes, her fiat, let it be done to me according to your will. She trusted when it was crazy to trust. And Joseph, who probably was very hurt, listened to the dream. The angel of the Lord said, take Mary into your home as your wife. The child has been conceived by the Holy Spirit, and you will name him Jesus. 
Joseph not only listened, he acted. He listened to the dream, then acted by changing his plans of not divorcing her and taking her into his home and raising Jesus as his own child. Joseph and Mary are such beautiful examples, friends, not just on Christmas or at Christmas, but every day of the year. I don't know if what you do with your nativity set, but I have uh, several of them up all year round in my room. And I have them up because the nativity is where it all starts. And I'm going to encourage you to get some type of nativity. It doesn't have to be your big one, but a small one or an image, a picture, a statue of Mary and Joseph and let them continue to be for us an example, an example of faithfulness, an example of never giving up, an example of saying yes when it was crazy to say yes, an example of trusting when they didn't know what they were trusting in. Because friends, what about us? Isn't life so much like that? Where we have to make decisions, we have to make choices, we have to trust, we pray for wisdom, and then we let Jesus take us and show us the way. None of us know how our life goes with its ups and, and, and its downs. But boy, can we do great things if we trust, if we keep Jesus as our center. And that's what this Advent time is preparing for, the time of Jesus. And we will celebrate Jesus' coming, either through our own death or when he comes through the second coming whichever one comes first, and we don't know. And as faithful Christians, it doesn't matter. All we have to do is live faithfully and keep Jesus always as our center, and then we're always going to be ready. It's when we choose not to follow Jesus that we have the problem, and then we're doing it on our own. And then as we spend this last week coming into Christmas, it will have a whole new meaning for us. And when you see the nativities in your home, on people's lawns, in our churches, look to Mary and Joseph, these two ordinary people who God chose for a very unordinary thing, the birth of the Savior of the world. And let's look to them and let's, as we look and pray and say, Mary and Joseph, help us be people who trust the way you did. Help us be people who don't give up. Help us be people who say yes when it's crazy to say yes. And just as Joseph listened, he was willing to change his mind and then he acted. And sometimes we have to do the same. We have to change our mind. We have to be willing to do things differently. Cardinal Joseph Bernardine, former Archbishop of Chicago of fond memory, he wrote a book, and there's a line in it I love. It says, God writes straight with crooked lines, which means we're going in the right direction, but it's going to be a wild ride. So friends, how good it is that we are here as we come to this fourth Sunday of our Advent journey, and we have a full week to prepare. Let us take time to slow down, to be with Jesus, and to get ready to celebrate with our families, our friends, our parishes, our communities, the birth of Jesus. And remember when you see Mary and Joseph, say a prayer. Say, Mary and Joseph, help me to be faithful the way you were. Help me to never give up and help me to say yes the way you did. So friends, let's continue to pray for each other. As we come in this week, especially of Advent, the last week, let us pray for peace in our world, in our cities, especially in the Ukraine and other places that need healing and peace. And let us pray for all those who have asked us to pray for them all on our prayer list. Let's never give up. And let's always know Jesus is our center and he will never give up on us. Have a great week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. How good it is that we're together. Have a great week and never give up. Bye-bye.